let us fade away It's not a price I wanna pay And it's not too late No, we lost our purpose Chasing all that surplus You were all Hi guys and welcome back to the 10th in the series of me documenting my ownership of my 1997 993 Carrera S. Today we're going to take the 993 out for a drive and during the drive we're going to do a bit of a talk while we drive and I'm going to give you some insight into the driving experience of the 993. So this is where I store my car, this is where the 993 is kept most of the time. During the winter also it's stored here for about six months every year. In the last year because of the Covid situation it was stored for actually seven months. I roll the car forwards and backwards every two to three weeks um, just to make sure there's no flat spots on the tyres. You obviously with the weight on the car and with the with the tyres being in the same position all the time if you're not careful you can get flat spots which damage the tyres so I roll the car forwards and backwards every two to four weeks something like that it doesn't have to be accurate so you get the wheels on a new section of the tyre so that you're not um, keeping the weight on the same section of the tyre all the time which obviously as I said will create flat spots or could create flat spots. I never start the car I turn it over with the DME really I out that in effect stops the car from firing people of in, in the know of 993s and air called 911s will know about removing the, the DME relay to help to prevent the car from being stolen and number two prevent it from firing so you can turn the engine over just to spin the oil around and get the oil circulating and oil pressure up to prevent any damage and to keep the mechanical parts of the engine coated now that's not so much of a problem nowadays because the special oils that we have nowadays all the parts of the internal engine are coated anyway um, because the oil sticks now and um, with the special types of oils it sticks to the actual mechanical parts of the engine so you don't have that issue so much but just to cover myself off and just to be safe I spin the engine over about every two to four weeks probably about every four weeks spinning the engine over but not firing it I never start it during the winter period there's no point because you're never going to drive it anywhere and when you start a car and you leave it ticking over without it being under load um, for any any duration you're just putting additional wear and excessive additional wear on the engine so the car literally stays in here during the winter for circa six seven months seven months this year as I said and it fires straight away as soon as I as soon as I set it to start put the DME back in then it fires straight away never any problems always reliable but then that's what you get with a 911 So guys, we're just going off to get some fuel. Haven't uh, driven the car for a couple of weeks. I never put a hell of a lot of fuel in the car, number one, um, because the car is left in the garage for quite a while and the fuel can get stale. I mean, when it over winter time, it's standard practice that you should fill the car up with fresh fuel anyway, um, but it hasn't been left standing that long. But, um, want to make sure that there isn't so much fuel in the car that if somebody should decide to try and steal the car that they can't go very far as well although the security measures I have at the house are very good so um, that's very unlikely to happen so the driving experience of a 993 air-cooled first of all it feels solid I know that's 
stating the obvious, but in a 993 air cooled, it really is a feeling of the car feeling really solid. It feels really planted, um, feels a little bit heavy, but that's more of a feeling of substantial presence on the road. And it feels old, you can't get away from it, it feels like an old car. Um, not excessively old, it doesn't feel old from the point of view of being worn because the suspension's been rebuilt and it's you know a very good conditioned car, it's you know near as damn immaculate. So it's not worn, it's just an old feel, you know. For example, when you're driving it, it uses a very old style management system, which is one of the earlier management systems that, that Porsche used. Um, very basic management system and you can get caught out when you're trying to pull away for example if you're not careful the car can make you look an idiot whereas in modern cars nowadays and in modern Porsches the management systems do a lot for you they do a lot of pre-revving pre-setting up of the car before you change gear etc and on the on the downshifts they they blip the they blip and prime the engine with fuel um, to prevent the car from going anywhere near um, a stall and, and to prepare the car ready for accelerating. Obviously you don't get that in the older cars, you have to drive it. And that's one thing that makes this car a driver's car is that you really have to drive it. It doesn't do anything for you and it can make you look an idiot, as I said, if, you, if you're not on your toes. And it can be hard work if you're driving it long distances, but it can be very rewarding as well. The car feels heavy in the steering which is a good thing for a 911 you don't want it to feel light when i first had the car it was very light on the front end because the, the suspension was worn and because it was it was quite substantially higher than it is now on the right height uh, the key thing to to dine to an air called 911s is, and to um, 993s in particular is to drop the ride height not too excessively low because obviously we're in england on british roads and you don't want it to to look like a chav car um, so it's important that the, the ride height isn't too low. This is ride height plus 10 millimeters, but you get the ride height down, you get the suspension sorted, um, and the car can be very well planted and no longer light on the steering and very direct. And with the GT2 Evo rod end centers, they're not the track rod ends, it's the, it's the internal sections internal to the actual track rod ends. With those being the GT2 Evo parts and being solid, Obviously that provides a very directness, it removes any cushioning at all that you get in the standard 993 and that you also would get in the RS track rod ends uh, because these being the GT2 Evo versions, they're just solid metal so you get a more direct feel on the steering and more pointy which means you know if you move the steering wheel it actually does change direction um, it's not aggressive in that nature, it's actually quite nice having it that way, I prefer it but it makes it very direct so you've got to make sure you're on the ball all the time when you drive it even more with those with the suspension sorted um, lower and with these um, GT2 Evo track rod ends and internal insert parts. This is 22 years old now, nearly 23 years old. I think it does around 170 to 175. Porsche are always conservative on their top end figures. The acceleration isn't anything to write home about. I think it's about five seconds, 0 to, 0 to 60 maybe a little bit quicker on this particular model but it's the wide body so the wide body is the slower but 170 even in modern times is still quite fast so in its day when you think this was released in 1997 it's capable of doing 170 175 miles an hour that is quick so it just shows goes to show the sort of speed that these cars were when they were released in 97 very quick indeed and a very high-end mark for its day. Hopefully you can appreciate some of the mechanical driving experience. It's also called very agricultural, which means in effect that it's very mechanical. When you move the gear selector, you're actually moving the gear selector shafts. It's not a pulley-driven system. And you have to drive the car. It's very mechanical in, it, in your engagement with the car which is a good thing as well if you like driving cars. If you want the car to drive itself, then you're in the wrong car. And acceleration is, is quite good. You know, you get it on song. It's a great experience because it's an air-cooled engine. You get the howl of the air-cooled engine and you get the mechanical sound because you haven't got a water jacket. So you, get, you hear a lot more of the engine, a lot more of the mechanical engineering of the engine when you're driving the car. So we'll close the video out now. 
Thanks very much for watching guys. Please like, subscribe and share the video amongst all your friends. And I notice also that around circa 70-75% of my viewers aren't actually subscribed. So please make sure you subscribe. It's very important for the channel so that I can grow the channel and move forward with the channel. And also please make sure that you share the, the video among your friends. And thanks a lot for watching guys again and see you in the next video.